Okay, this is just from a few minutes ago. This is uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, speaking about uh, why Paul Gosar must be censured. I've been serving in this body just under three years. In that three years, enormous amount has happened. But in response to the Republican leader's remarks when he says that this action is unprecedented. What I believe is unprecedented is for a member of House leadership of either party to be unable to condemn incitement of violence against a member of this body. It is sad. It is a sad day in which a member who leads a political party in the United States of America cannot bring themselves to say that issuing a depiction of murdering a member of Congress is wrong and instead decides to venture off into a tangent about gas prices and inflation. Huh. What is so hard? What is so hard about saying that this is wrong? This is not about me. This is not about Representative Gosar. But this is about what we are willing to accept. That's the issue. Are you willing to accept working in a hostile work environment where your colleagues are socially tweeting or Instagramming and communicating with a base of Americans who want to have an excuse to do violent things to especially women in the Congress of the democratic uh, persuasion of color. Why can't the leader of the Republican Party in the House say that that is not acceptable? Why can't he say that? Because Donald Trump has the data on every one of their voters. That's why. They're not afraid of Donald Trump. They're afraid of Donald Trump's operation. They're afraid of all the psychological profiling that's been sucked out of social media and given to Donald Trump's campaign. They know that Donald Trump can target any one of their voters at will, precisely, with pinpoint accuracy and precision, and that they can talk that person because they have a psychological profile on that person. They can talk to that person, and they can get that person to not vote for even a Republican member of the House or a Republican senator. This is really scary because of the data. And that is why Paul Gosar chose social media as his dissemination point. The heinous part is that he used his official office and his official accounts to threaten her life and the life of Joe Biden. All right, here's Paul Gosar trying to, uh, I, I won't even say defend himself. He doesn't think he needs defending. Okay, this is him saying, I didn't mean to, to hurt anybody. I, I, I just, I, it's, I was just having fun. I rise today to address and reject the mischaracterization, accusations from many in this body that the cartoon from my office cartoon. is dangerous or threatening. It was not. And I reject the false narrative categorically. I do not espouse violence towards anyone. I never have. Huh. It was not my purpose to make anyone upset. I voluntarily took the cartoon down, not because it was itself a threat, but because some thought it was. Out of compassion for those who generally felt offense, I self-censored. Last week, my staff posted a video depicting a policy battle regarding amnesty for tens of millions of illegal aliens. This was an enemy that speaks to young voters who are too often overlooked. Say. Even Twitter, the left's mouthpiece, did not remove the cartoon, noting <laughs> it was in the public's interest for it to remain. 
The cartoon directly contributes to the understanding and the discussion of the real-life battle resulting from this administration's open border policy. Oh, my God. This body is considering passage of Mr. Biden's reckless socialist Marxist $4.9 trillion <laughs> spending bill that provides $100 billion for amnesty to tens of millions of illegal aliens already in this country. <laughs> this is what the left doesn't want the American people to know. Our country is suffering from the plague of illegal immigration. I don't stop pointing this out, nor will I. So he he has been and is aligned with uh, this whole replacement theory crowd, the white supremacist crowd, uh, the unite the right crowd, where they say Jews will not replace us and this one won't replace us. And, you know, appealing to the crowd of old, angry white men who are full of resentment for anybody that isn't an old, angry white man. OK, we do not have a policy of open borders. As you know, Joe Biden has deported more people and the left was upset because he was using uh, Title 42 in the middle of a pandemic to deny people due process as they entered into this country illegally, okay? They're allowed to make claims of asylum normally, but he used the same Trump rule uh, saying it's a pandemic, you can't come in, you're going back, there will be no hearing. And the left was really upset because Joe Biden was deporting people faster than Obama deported people. (laughs) He just makes this crap up because it makes him seem as if he cares about some issue. He doesn't care about some issue. He was he's involved with the the, the American, the America First Caucus. Uh, They say Anglo-Saxon political traditions are fading away and they're being replaced in this country by mass immigration. And it, it, it negatively affects and these are his words, the unique identity of this country, the unique identity of this country, by the way, is immigrants. That's what makes America unique immigrants from everywhere, from all over the world, from Europe, from Italy, from Ireland, from England, from South Africa, from North Africa, from East Africa, from West Africa, from Central America, from South America, from Argentina, all the way down to the tip of Ushuaia. (laughs) I mean, and, and it so enrages him that he literally said out loud right there that he produced this cartoon to appeal to younger Americans right so that they would know they have an enemy and the enemy is joe biden's open borders policy which doesn't exist any more than crt which is a wtf moment when you realize crt does not exist and they're against it they're against a lot of things that aren't happening and that makes them worthy of censure, especially if they're going to incite violence in order to prevent something that's not happening. Don't have time to listen to the live show? Want to hear more on your schedule? Go to randyroads.com and buy a stinking podcast.